Just a pilot in his cockpit seated. Black leather on his ass, keep a hustler heated. Hello and welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about my garage here. So my garage is detached, not attached to the house. So the power running to my garage here just comes in from the house and it's just one single circuit which supplies 15 amps of power, 110 volts. So this is a problem that a lot of people run into. So since it's detached, in order to run more power here, it, it's, it's gonna require some level of trenching or uh, something more, more invasive. And in my particular case, my main power circuit is full, so I would have to upgrade that as well. So it's talking about a lot of upgrading to the main circuit and then trenching more um, power and uh, putting it in underground conduit and all that nonsense and, and complication that I really don't want to go through and pay for. So I looked for a simpler solution, if you want to call it that, and um, what I came up with was to build my own power wall that will take advantage of the current power that's available and supplement with battery when required. So let me show you how this works. So first of all, in my garage constantly running, I have a mini split. This is a Pioneer. This is one of the most efficient mini splits that I could find. It's, it's actually pretty impressive how, how well it works. And it's mostly just to dehumidify the garage here. So I have it running 24 hours a day on just low. And it keeps it kind of coolish in here. The main thing that it does is it keeps it dry in here. And it's very dry in, I live in Houston. It's really wet, so any any space you can keep dry is going to be a lot better for that space. So voila, here here we go. This is the system. So what we have here is a Victron Multi Plus Two, and here's the specs on it. It is a 48 volt battery system that it runs off of. It's a uh, 3,000 watts and 35 amps. And here's where, uh, okay, there's a complicated reason why I went with this Vicron one instead of like a GrowWatt and, and some of the all-in-ones like a lot of people have. That's for another video because that's just a bit much. We'll get into that at some other point, but right now this is what I have, this Vicron, and it has been working great. And I have this tied to four BigBattery.com Badger BDGR batteries. Each of these are about 33 amp hours of uh, at 40, 48 volts. So what you're looking at usable for me is about six kilowatts of power, a little bit over that 6.2. So the way it works is I have circuits here, my power, the Tesla, the air conditioner, then I have some other ones just for emergency and I did it this way because I did. But anyway, so I have this Tesla and everything runs to the inverter here. Now the inverter has connects to the battery and it has six kilowatts at its disposal. And um, because these are kind of designed for um, like uh, golf carts and stuff like that, they're, each of them can actually support lots of power uh, as far as output and input at the same time. So what I'm putting these batteries through is very, very minimal. Like I think one of these batteries could almost run the entire 3000 watts. So by having four of them, I did that for redundancy at about 550 bucks. These are the cheapest, some of the cheapest batteries you can find as far as 48 volt lithium batteries. And by getting four of them, I figured I would hedge my, my, uh, my bets and that none of them are going to have a problem and if one did it would be a lot easier just to take it apart and return it um or to just uh it'd be a lot easier to just return it to the to big battery for my uh 10 year warranty or whatever they claim they do so that's the reason for that these are small easy to ship not like the huge ones that have to go on a pallet and all that all that nonsense so that's why i went with these and so with the way the system works, here is a plug, and this is a extension cord. 
with the ends chopped off, that goes into the Vicron inverter here. And that just plugs into the wall, like no big deal. So what happens is, this thing is set up to only draw a maximum of, of 13 amps from this cord here. And that 13 amps keeps me well below my 15 amp circuit that I have here. And it still allows me to use up to my 3000 watts of power. And if anything exceeds that 15 amps, or that 13 amps, it will just draw the power from the battery. Now, since I have six kilowatts of batteries, I can do things like charge my Tesla Model 3, and this will allow me to charge the Model 3 at the full 12 amps that it's capable of charging with on a 110. And while it's charging the car, if I do something crazy like open the garage door, or turn on the air conditioner, or just about anything, it won't blow the circuit because obviously 12 amps is most of a 15 amp circuit. So this is something that anyone can pretty much do to, um, you know, upgrade a, a location and give it more power than, than you have, than you would otherwise have. Because in here in my garage now, I can use a full 3000 watts of power. So I could run like, uh, you know, like power tools or whatever I wanted to run. And I can run a ton of them despite the fact that I only have a 15 amp circuit in here and if it needed any more power they would just come from here. So yeah that's uh, that's about it. Um, this is some of the this was set up for a very low cost. This was some of the one of the lowest cost um, setups I could come up with because I just wanted to be able to charge my car without trenching and upgrading all my panels and everything. So I just wanted it to be able to charge the car, run my air conditioner, and it does that flawlessly. It does has never. It pulls exactly what I said it's it's set to. And it just works great. So I upgraded my circuit without upgrading the circuit. Just gets uh. This is a a non complicated solution to do that. So that's it for now. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Peace. Just a pilot in his cockpit seated. Black leather on his ass, keep a hustler heated.